Wind picks up tomorrow ahead of major changes by Saturday. How low the snow levels will drop coming up. It's easier to do it before they freeze and turn to mush. Getting ready for winter. We've got tips on preparing your lawn for the cold with Utah's first big winter storm on the way. Being the best of a broken system isn't isn't helping anybody. Governor Cox is proposing a tuition freeze on all colleges and universities in Utah. That's going to be really helpful for my family for sure. Why he says the schools should learn to do more with less. There was a gap of about 18 inches in the uh, muffler line. It's a car part in high demand by thieves. The surge in catalytic converter thefts and the plan to help stop it. An Ogden woman finds a locket inside someone's ashes. Years later, she sets out to find the owner. Coming up, I'll show you what happens next. Live from Utah's news leader, Fox 13 News at 9 starts right now. We begin tonight with two big stories. A man has died after a crash in Layton, and we are learning more about that F-35 fighter jet that crashed at Hill Air Force Base last night. And we're in the final days of nice fall weather here in Utah. It's the calm before the storm and a big cold snap this weekend. Let's get right to Utah's weather authority, Allison Krogan, with what we can all expect. Allison. That's right. So tomorrow will be the warm before the storm. So dry roads for you, but we still could see some impacts into tomorrow with some breezy conditions here across the state. So tomorrow morning, about 50 when you wake up, you'll want to grab a sweater for the morning and then during the afternoon, we'll have some breezy conditions. Now we're going to see our biggest changes as a front arrives Saturday, second half of the day into Utah. We cool behind it. We start seeing some areas of snowfall all the way down to the valley floors, potentially mixing in by Sunday morning. But bulk of our travel impacts will be up in the mountains this weekend. For the Wasatch Front, for the rest of tonight, we're in the 50s through the evening, about 50 when you wake up tomorrow morning. So yeah, we'll have a cool start tomorrow, but enjoy the heat while we have it because our last hot day for a while. Temperatures tomorrow morning, 40s and 50s, and then we do have winter alerts that have been issued for the mountains. Winter storm watches go into effect Saturday afternoon. How much snow we can expect here across the state and where? Coming up. Allison, thanks so much. With Utah's first winter storm of the season on its way, it's time to get ready for the cold. Yeah, ready or not, Fox 13 News reporter Jenna Bree spoke with experts about preparing your lawns and gardens before the snowflakes fall. These are the final days to winterize. Today, tomorrow, while it's still nice, go out there and get a nice watering on your plant so it has enough time to take that up into the system so they have a little more protection for the cold. Ryan Glover recommends tending to your plants now before the cold comes. Vegetable gardens, tomatoes, pepper, stuff like that, if they haven't pulled them out, it's easier to do it before they freeze and turn to mush. It may even be our last chance to enjoy the fall colors. The one thing that may happen to some of the, the trees and things like that is uh, it may freeze some of the leaves. Um, so you may miss out on some fall color if they haven't turned yet. Well, we don't traditionally think of winter as the gardening season. Glover says when the cold hits, it's actually a great time to plant a tree. Roots keep growing and then also you don't need to, uh, when you drive them around, you know, you, you don't damage the leaves and stuff like that. So it's actually a nice time of year. Our lawns are resilient, but our sprinkler systems, not so much. It could freeze over. I mean, it's a potential that it could freeze and crack and, and flood areas, I mean, basements, potential, stuff like that. Daniel Paul suggests getting a professional to flush all the water out of your sprinkler soon. He believes this week will mark the end of lawn watering season. I believe it is the end. I mean, as soon as the, the temperatures drop and, and you start shutting down the sprinkler systems, it, it probably is the end for, for the grass anyway. It's going to go dormant. Kicking off the unofficial start to winter. In West Jordan, Jenna Bree. Fox 13 News, Utah. Well, don't forget, you can track the weather with Utah's Weather Authority wherever you are, right from the palm of your hand. Scan that QR code right now on your screen to download the Fox 13 Utah Weather app from the Apple Store, or you can also find it in the Google Play Store. 
New at 9, a 75-year-old man is dead tonight and a three-car crash is under investigation in Layton. Police say the initial crash happened on 30th North near Fairfield Road just before 6 this evening. Investigators think the man was turning out of the Quail Ridge Mobile Home Park when he collided with an SUV driven by a 50-year-old woman. A third car was hit by the truck, but damage was minimal and the driver was not hurt. The 50-year-old woman was taken to the hospital with non-life-threatening injuries. Flight operations have been suspended at Hill Air Force Base as officials continue to investigate last night's crash of an F-35 fighter jet. The Air Force says a pilot was returning from a routine training exercise right about 6.15 in the evening when he was forced to eject before the aircraft went down at the north end of the base runway. The pilot suffered only minor injuries and is now resting at home. It's a traumatic experience, right, that I, you know, not all of us go through. Uh, he's doing okay right now, and we have a lot of resources for him, and he's aware of that. So folks to talk to, uh, helping agencies on the base to kind of deal with the aftermath of a situation like this. But right now, he's in good spirits. Uh, and he's doing well. Base officials say the plane itself was destroyed. An interim safety board has been established to investigate the crash. Governor Cox is supporting the idea of passenger rail service from Boise to Salt Lake to Las Vegas. Earlier this month, Fox 13 News reported that UDOT signed on to a letter to the federal government expressing interest in the idea. Asked about it at his monthly news conference today, the governor went all in. The potential for rail uh, between uh, between Boise and, and Salt Lake and, and Las Vegas, which obviously would, would impact uh, uh, southern Utah, it's something I'm very much a fan of. I, I, I recognize that that is, again, many years down the road, um, the, the opportunity for us to get there. But those are the types of, of conversations and, and, and planning that we absolutely should be doing. The proposal is in its infancy with the U.S. Department of Transportation. It's unknown when or how much it would cost to make it happen. A locket containing a loved one's ashes went missing years ago. Its disappearance devastated the family until an Ogden woman picked it up and tried to get it home where it belongs. Fox 13 News reporter Emily Tenser has the touching story you'll only see here. What if your most prized possession vanished? The more I looked at it, I'm like, hey, this is somebody's ashes. Tiffany Grolet's family found this locket years ago at the Pineview Reservoir. And it's just, it's so, it's so surreal. She posted it on Facebook, hoping to find its owner, but no luck. So she kept it away in this box for safekeeping. I set it up on my counter, up on my cupboard, and it sat there. Sat there for four years until two weeks ago when she decided to try again. This time, finding the family all the way in Texas. But I'm like scrolling through all fast, and I was like, wait a minute. And I like scroll past back up, and I like, I see it, and I was like, there is no way. She's like, hey, um, you don't know me, but I think that's my mom's necklace that she lost. Sierra Austin has her own locket. It's exactly the same. The ashes are her grandfather, James Clifford Terry. I'm like, hi, James, you know, talking to the necklace, like you've been in my house for this many years. <laughs> nice to meet you. So I have both of my grandparents. So I know it's going to make my mom really happy to have them both back together. And in a twist of events, the women got to talking and found out Austin and Gurley's daughter were best friends back in high school when both families lived in Ogden. She goes, Mom, I've been, I know her grandpa. And, um... And at that moment in time, I was so thankful because um, my kids lost their grandpa and they have their ashes. Now the missing locket, always on their mind, will leave its box and go back to resting close near the heart where it belongs. She knows that her dad is coming home and she it, she's very happy. Gurley plans to take this locket to the post office so it can return back to Texas to its original owner. Reporting in Layton, Emily Tensor, Fox 13 News, Utah.
a woman gored by a bison, and the whole attack was caught on video. Tonight, how she's doing after the harrowing ordeal. We can't kill it with uh, antibiotics. We can't kill it with um, antivirals, and we don't have a vaccine for this. A rare infection leaves a boy dead. Why doctors say it may have been caused by a day at Lake Mead. Some relief could come to students at Utah's public universities if Governor Cox gets his way. How he's taking a stand on the cost of higher education. And more Utahns are falling victim to catalytic converter thefts. The strategy Unified Police and Jiffy Lube are trying to curb the trend. After a big win in the season opener, the Jazz are back at practice today. Did Jordan Clarkson hear the noise about the Jazz losing games this season? He'll tell us coming up. After just 45 days in office, British Prime Minister Liz Truss has resigned. Members of other political parties in the United Kingdom are calling it a sign the Conservative Party has run its course. Some are calling for a nationwide election to elect a new Prime Minister rather than allowing the current Conservative Party to elect a new leader. We need stability in our country and the only way to get that in our democracy now is to have a general election, allow the British people to give the new government a mandate to determine a way forward. Liz Truss's resignation makes her time in office the shortest of any prime minister in British history. She will remain prime minister until a successor is chosen. Well, on this side of the Atlantic, a New York jury has found actor Kevin Spacey not liable for battery. This was a civil trial. Anthony Rapp filed a lawsuit accusing Spacey of touching him inappropriately after a party at Spacey's apartment. Rapp was 14 and Spacey was 20 six at the time. Both were relatively unknown actors. Spacey says the allegations are not true, even though he apologized after the accusations came out. But he says his publicity team at the time told him he'd be labeled a victim blamer if he pushed back. Now he says, quote, I regret my entire statement. The judge formally dismissed the case after the verdict. It was a tragic outcome for the family of a Princeton University student missing for nearly a week. Prosecutors in New Jersey say a school employee found 20-year-old Miss Ratch Ioannitis' body on campus this afternoon. The young woman was last seen on Friday near a residential building on campus. Prosecutors say her body was found behind the tennis courts. A medical examiner will determine the manner and cause of death. The university called the death a, quote, unthinkable tragedy. In Nevada, a boy has died after becoming sick from a rare brain-eating parasite that may have come from Lake Mead. Health officials say the brain-eating amoeba only lives in and is common in warm, fresh water environments, such as Lake Mead. But infections are incredibly rare because it can only enter the body through the nose. You can't swallow it and get sick. We've had maybe 154 cases in the U.S. since 1962. Only four have survived. The Southern Nevada Water Authority says there is no chance it can get into the city's drinking water. That agency pulls from the cold water deep in the lake, far from the warm surface where parasites reside. And all water is treated before delivery. Well, tonight, a Texas woman is sharing a warning on social media after she was gored by a bison while hiking, and the whole thing was caught on camera. You've got to see this. Take a look. Oh, oh my God! Oh, my God! Oh, oh goodness. Mm. Rebecca Clark posted this on TikTok last week. Since then, it has been viewed more than 2.2 million times. She says she was hiking alone on a trail at Cap Rock Canyons State Park. That's about 100 miles southeast of Amarillo, Texas. This was after she was rammed. You heard her in the video there. She laid in a bush for 50 minutes before she was flown to the hospital, miraculously, she suffered non-life-threatening injuries. More Americans have been rolling up their sleeves for updated COVID-19 booster shots. The CDC says 4.5 million Americans got the bivalent booster last week. 
That vaccine targets the original strain as well as two Omicron variants. A White House official says about 20% of senior citizens were among those getting it. Health officials say COVID-19 cases are falling in the U.S., but fear that trend could reverse as winter arrives. Hurricane Ian is proving to be a costly disaster. More than a billion dollars in federal aid has been provided to Florida and residents affected by the storm. FEMA says $545 million has gone to households and $302 million has gone to the state. The Small Business Administration has also provided $130 million in disaster loans to employers. And the National Flood Insurance Program has paid out $98 million to at least 40,000 people who have filed claims. Well, for the past several days, we've been talking about the big change headed our way it's in the coming. weather. coming. Yes, we're another day closer, Allison. Yes, so I think the good news is, is Saturday morning breast cancer walk will have decent weather compared to last year and compared to the rest of the weekend because our front's not going to arrive to the Wasatch Front until the second half of the day. Now, when that front does arrive and out ahead of it, we'll have some wind and some areas of showers, but the bulk of our precipitation Saturday night into Sunday and we have a lot of it on the way. So I want to show you and highlight some winter storm impacts for this weekend. This is for the next three days. So Friday, Saturday and Sunday. Here are where we're going to see where our biggest impacts will be across the state. We'll go ahead and zoom in. So all of this lightest blue that you're seeing, those are limited winter impacts. But as we go ahead and zoom in, you'll see the Salt Lake Valley limited impacts along our I-15 corridor. But I-80 up towards Park City, we're tracking minor to maybe moderate impacts and extreme impacts for the top of the Cottonwood Canyons, highest peaks up towards the Ochres. But what we're going to be tracking out of this storm will be areas of heavy rainfall. This is absolutely our strongest storm and coldest storm so far this season. So we're going to have even some winter impacts down through the mountains of southern Utah, mainly minor impacts south of I-70 for our highest terrain and then limited once you get into Washington County. Now we do have winter storm watches that just got issued today. These will start Saturday at 6 p.m. and take you through Monday morning at 6 a.m. Mainly 6 to 12 inches of snow with some higher amounts possible. Top of the Cottonwood Canyons, there is a scenario where we see closer to two feet of snow. So that's how we're going to see travel impacts, Definitely recreation impacts. This is not the weekend to do camping in the mountains. We've got some heavy snowfall on the way and frigid temperatures. Across southern Utah, wind advisories have been expanded. So these are going to start Saturday at noon and take you through Saturday at midnight. This now does include Escalante all the way over towards, uh, t towards the Lake Powell area. And then this does include Zion, St. George, and we're going to have the wind advisory, maybe some travel impacts, and also we could see some areas of blowing dust. Now we take you through future cast because this front arrives late in the day on Saturday, probably around dinner time for the Wasatch Front. We keep it around through Sunday and with this area of low pressure, we see this counterclockwise flow. We pull in the cooler air from the north and on that backside, we end up with potentially some high amounts in a northwesterly flow, particularly for the Cottonwood Canyons. Then we travel through Monday morning and we see the storm shifting off to the east. We could have some slick roads left come Monday morning. For Salt Lake City through the rest of tonight, we'll have you in the 50s this evening. When you wake up tomorrow morning, it'll be a comfortable, somewhat comfortable start. That's actually going to be warmer than it will be for a high on Sunday. Tomorrow's low. So overnight, when you wake up along the Wasatch Front, about 45 to 50, near 60 degrees at 10 a.m. tomorrow. And then temperatures just across the board, mainly 40s and 50s for early on Friday morning for Provo, Salt Lake, Tooele, Ogden, Layton. And then we see some breezy conditions tomorrow out ahead of our cold front. So wind will be about 10 to 20 miles per hour for the Wasatch Front with highs into the 70s tomorrow. For St. George, 81 tomorrow, 78 on Saturday, then 60 only for a high on Sunday. For Salt Lake, we have 70s tomorrow, 60s Saturday, 40s on Sunday. We'll talk about precipitation for the Wasatch Front and snow levels in your Super 7 Day forecast. Thanks, Allison. Straight ahead. How you could own a special set of chairs from what was Rio Tinto Stadium. Plus, we'll explain how that sale is going toward a good cause. 
And we will give you a look at some of the amazing wheelchair costumes patients at Shriners Children Hospital showed off today. If you are a dyed in the wool Real Salt Lake fan, this is an offer you might not want to pass up. Starting tomorrow, chairs from the riot section in the former Rio Tinto Stadium will be up for sale. The stadium was renamed America First Field last month. The chairs are being taken out so the section can be turned into a safe standing section for fans. Well, we know that this place has created a lot of memories for a lot of people. Um, you know, it's America First Field is really um, the home of a lot of memories. And so when you can take a memory home with you and keep it, um, you know, turn it into, you know, your own personal sports bar, you can have you know, a piece of the stadium at home with you. It's really something unique that fans will be able to have. Now, if you want one of these chairs, you need to go to the south end of the stadium starting at noon tomorrow. RSL started with about 230 chairs. There are only about 60 left tonight. RSL is asking for a $10 donation. Donations will be accepted by cash or Venmo. All proceeds will go to supporting RSL's Vice President of Communications and Public Relations, John Jenna, who was diagnosed with ALS in June. Halloween came early today at Shriners Children's Hospital. That's in Salt Lake City. Take a look at these great costumes. I love those little <laughs> Yoda ears there. Yeah. Staff and volunteers transformed patient wheelchairs for their annual Halloween party and parade. Families shared with us that there's actually quite a few barriers to having fun on Halloween for children with physical disabilities. Uh, things like finding a costume that fits or being able to go door to door trick or treating and navigating stairs. And so this clinic really levels the playing field for those kids, making sure that they've got that larger than life costume that brings everyone coming to them to check it out. Around 40 children participated in this afternoon's Halloween party and parade. Now we can present it to the DA and we can say we have a victim. One law enforcement agency says they've seen a sharp increase in the number of catalytic converter thefts. How they're hoping a partnership with Jiffy Lube will help combat the problem. Utah's governor proposes a tuition freeze at all colleges and universities. If I were to be king for a day, I'd say you guys get in the room and work out your problems. It is a water fight in southern Utah as two neighboring counties go after the same sources. Jazz getting ready to take on the Timberwolves and Rudy Gobert. We'll hear from the team on thoughts of playing their old teammate. Catalytic converter thefts continue to be a problem with some Utah law enforcement agencies saying they saw thefts double last year. Fox 13 News reporter Chris Arnold explains how Unified Police have now partnered with Jiffy Lube to combat the problem. There was a gap of about 18 inches in the uh, muffler line. That was where Rebecca Thomas says her catalytic converter used to be on her car. This after she says it was stolen Sunday afternoon while she was at Fashion Place Mall in Murray. Spent about three hours in the mall uh, with my niece. Came back, got in the car, turned it on, and an enormous shocking roar began. A fix that comes with a hefty price tag, Thomas says, of about $3,000. Fortunately, I have comprehensive insurance on my policy, so that will take care of the expense. Fox 13 News wrote along with the Utah Attorney General's office on Wednesday, who were working with detectives from other agencies, like West Jordan and Taylorsville, to crack down on the problem. Their efforts netting multiple arrests. They're going out and cutting these and trying to get the, sell them to the fence to get the quick dollar to be able to go take, to take care of their fix. Investigators say they're dealing with an increase in catalytic converter thefts as well. We have experienced in the last couple of years where the thefts have doubled. It's why the Unified Police Department and Jiffy Lube are joining forces to combat the problem. Have your catalytic converter engraved with the full vehicle identification number and striped with a high temperature paint. Salt Lake County Sheriff Rosie Rivera says under the current state statute, the companies who buy these catalytic converters from people who steal them have to take their driver's license and a fingerprint. But there was no way to know who the victim of the theft was. Sheriff Rivera is counting on this service to help solve that problem. We really think it's going to make a difference at when we go to 
uh, pursue charges because now we can present it to the DA and we can say we have a victim. Well, victims like Thomas say they applaud these efforts. She's hoping more will be done to cut down on these kinds of thefts. They're truly addressing the symptom of the problem. I think we need <laughs> We need a law. Well, as for this catalytic converter engraving and stripe service, they say it only takes about five minutes and is free to the public. In Midvale, Chris Arnold, Fox 13 News, Utah. A five-year-old boy now recovering after being attacked by a dog. It happened yesterday afternoon near 8600 South and 700 East in Sandy. Police say the boy was riding a bike with his mother close by when a Siberian Husky escaped its yard and attacked him unprovoked. The boy was flown to Primary Children's Hospital. Police say he faces a long road to recovery. Animal Services took the dog into custody. Investigators and a judge will now determine whether or not that dog will be euthanized. Springville police are investigating what they're calling a suspicious death. It happened the night of October 8th, but police are just now releasing the information. Officers were called to an industrial park at 1851 North Parkway Court. They found 56-year-old Springville resident Bobby Poole dead in the driver's seat of his van. Police won't give any other details at this point, but believe his death is suspicious and are asking anyone who knows anything about it to come forward. What I want to focus on is how do we make education less expensive in, in, in our country? Governor Cox is proposing relief for students at Utah's colleges and universities. Today, he announced plans for an all-out tuition freeze. Fox 13 News political reporter Ben Winslow has the story from the University of Utah. While he is not a fan of President Biden's student loan forgiveness plan, Governor Spencer Cox says he would like to see a focus on making higher education less expensive. Are we just going to do this every five to ten years? Um, why, why aren't we attacking the problem? Uh, what we try to do in our administration is try to get upstream of where the problem is. At his monthly news conference, the governor defended the cost of college in Utah. We're in the bottom five, I think, for cost of higher education. We have some of the lowest student loan rates in the country. Um, and uh, that's that's a very good thing, uh, but but being the best of a broken system isn't isn't helping anybody. But uh, you know what would help people? Uh, a tuition freeze. Like we should not increase tuition next year. So uh, if you're looking for a headline or something to write, that's something that I will be proposing is a tuition freeze across the board. Governor Cox says they've been generous in funding higher ed and Utah's colleges and universities can learn to do more with less. That will help with, uh, with, with students, with families, parents that are struggling, giving our kids an opportunity. We should not be increasing that every year. Is the quick of higher education on board with that? They will be. In response, the Utah Board of Higher Education says it evaluates tuition and fees annually, and its topmost concern is keeping college affordable and accessible. The board's chair says inflation is impacting the finances of individuals and families nationwide, and we are committed to doing all we can to ensure a higher education remains within reach for Utah students. She says, we look forward to working with Governor Cox and the Utah legislature in the next year on this proposal. Students I've spoken with here at the University of Utah say they'd welcome a little financial relief in the form of that tuition freeze. I pay right now like, I think around 20. So that's going to be really helpful for my family for sure. That's twenty thousand dollars. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's really hard sometimes to think about how much to pay for tuition, uh, living costs, and just trying to find food. I think a freeze on tuition would be great for us, just as a, a reliever. At the University of Utah, Ben Winslow, Fox 13 News, Utah. Coming up, more affordable housing is in the works in the state. What Housing Connect has planned in Midvale. Cold storm arrives this weekend. How low the snow levels will drop and also how that will impact your weekend plans. Housing Connect, Salt Lake County's Housing Authority, broke ground on a new affordable housing development today at Sunset Gardens near Fort Union Boulevard. Now, Housing Connect has owned the site since 1983 and plans to tear down the existing 24-unit duplexes. They'll replace them with three-story buildings containing 89 units, which they hope to lease to Utahns with incomes at or below 50% of the area's median income. The critical focus for us is those with the least amount of resource, those with a minimal income or, or those working towards having a greater income. But really, we see most families struggling 
if one has very little income, um, certainly finding, paying for housing is near to impossible. And the new buildings will also have designated units for residents with special needs and circumstances, including 10 ADA accessible units. Meanwhile, a company that has been working with the Air Force since the 1960s is expanding in Utah. The Aerospace Corporation, which develops and launches military satellites, held a ribbon-cutting ceremony for a new facility at Hill Air Force Base today. They'll support efforts to sustain and modernize the Air Force's intercontinental ballistic missile program, which plays an important role in national defense. The public can be rest assured that with aerospace supporting and being the trusted partner in the modernization of ICBMs that we re maintain a capable nuclear deterrence to deter our adversaries from utilizing uh, nuclear weapons against this country and protecting our national security. Aerospace first came to Utah in 2008 with only two employees, but has since grown to 38 employees. Still ahead, Governor Spencer Cox is sharing the changes he wants to see in the state and dealing with the mega drought. We've got the details on funds he says are coming our way. And coming up in sports, we'll hear from the Jazz after today's practice on being overlooked and facing former teammate Rudy Gobert tomorrow. And a couple of local players had touchdowns tonight for the Saints in the NFL. The highlights are on the way. At his monthly news conference today, Governor Cox said more changes to water policy will be needed as Utah grapples with the ongoing drought and a shrinking Great Salt Lake. But he's been impressed with how much water Utahns have already conserved. People want to do their part, and so we need more money also uh, dedicated to helping people who want to flip their strips, um, remove their, their uh, non-essential grass, and, uh, and put in water-wise landscaping. Uh, we definitely need more money uh, to, get, uh, more, uh, to, to get more water shares, to get water directly to the lake, and, and I think you'll see significant funding increases there as well. The governor says federal funds will come to Utah to help deal with the Colorado River decline and there will be money for agriculture to reduce its water use. Utah House Speaker Brad Wilson expects a series of bills to advance water conservation in the upcoming legislative session. Bob, there is an ongoing water fight happening in southern Utah, pitting counties against each other, and residents are worried about their supply running dry. Fox 13 News anchor Max Roth has a look at how the drought has turned neighbor against neighbor. In a legislative committee today, we learned Iron and Beaver counties have the same issues as the Wasatch Front. They are in the Great Basin, and the only water in the Great Basin comes from rain. The difference is that instead of a lake, their water flows into aquifers, essentially underground reservoirs. And when it doesn't snow and rain, just like lakes, aquifers run dry. It's going to cut my farm. I won't be able to farm. It's going to, it's going to basically wipe me out. You cannot challenge the water rights. They're court decreed water rights. Paul Monroe is general manager of the Central Iron County Water Conservancy District, and he's in a bind. The state says they can use 21,000 acre feet of water each year. What we use annually is about 28,000 acre feet, so that's the, the deficit of 7,000 acre feet. So with Cedar City growing so fast and Iron County low on options, the Conservancy District purchased water rights next door from the Pine Valley. That's in Beaver County. The plan plan is to pipe water south, depleting sources of water in Beaver County, where Mark Winch lives in the Wawa Valley on this isolated ranch. I live at Wawa Ranch. I own the spring complex. Um, it's my everything. Some of the lawmakers are skeptical. The Central Iron County Water Conservancy District says they're about six months out from completing their environmental impact process. And after that, both sides think they're headed for a lawsuit. If I were to be king for a day, I'd say you guys get in a room and work out your problems. It's clear from the meeting we don't really know a lot about our groundwater in Utah. And another dynamic clearly in play here, Iron County has more people and more money and they're more able to buy water rights so long as there actually is water. In studio, Max Roth, Fox 13 News, Utah.
Well, UDOT is getting ready for winter by expanding its Cottonwood Canyons sticker program. It makes it easier for visitors to bypass safety checks at the mouth of the canyons in severe weather. To make it easier to spot people that had the good tires and be able to get up the Cottonwood Canyon to reduce uh, delays at the mouth of the canyon. By the time you get up to the canyon and you got bald tires, it's a little too late. And so we wanted to start pre-checking people before the season started. Yeah, you should probably pre-check your own vehicle That's right now. Right. Yeah, good tires yeah. make all the difference in a snowstorm. The free program, by the way, started today at the Cottonwoods Maintenance Shed. Drivers can get their tires pre-inspected, and if they are compliant, they get a sticker pass for the entire winter. Happens every single year. We have to get used to driving in the snow, and it takes a couple of days. Sometimes that first of weeks. snowfall is always a You're shock. All over the place, yeah. yeah. Yes. Well, and this one, we're really going to see some tough driving conditions up in the mountains, especially overnight Saturday into Sunday. But let's start with Saturday morning. You're waking up and you're like, well, what's the deal? I thought there was going to be a storm this weekend. You're absolutely correct. It's just that it won't have arrived when you're waking up on Saturday morning. We're going to start Saturday. Here's your time stamp at 8 a.m. with some rain moving into northwest Utah. And then we're going to continue seeing impacts throughout the day. So a couple of things that I want to point out. I've fast forward this to Saturday at 8 p.m. This is when things are really going to get going, especially up in the mountains, and our temperatures are going to be plummeting. We've got the chance for some snow for much of the state, mainly for the mountains, though. We've got the chance for a little bit of snow to mix into the valleys, but with how warm that it's been, I think the bulk of our snow and toughest driving conditions will be above about 6,500 feet. Then we head through Sunday morning at 8 a.m. Here's what I want you to know. If you've got plans right now to go hiking with your friends on Saturday morning or camping Saturday night in the mountains, I want you to call them right now and I want you to tell them not a good idea this weekend unless you are prepared for full on winter conditions and the highest terrain. We're talking about maybe even close to two feet of snow up at the top of the Cottonwood Canyons. The system will move off to our east by Monday morning. Could still see a few slick spots and the cold temperatures will be sticking around, but we've got the front that's going to move through the Wasatch Front about dinner time on Saturday. And then into Sunday, we're going to continue pulling some cooler air. And by Monday, the storm's now off to our east. And we have a frigid start on Monday morning. So winterizing your yard, making sure your tires are good to go if you're going to be doing any mountain travel, especially overnight Saturday into Sunday. And then we've got just some breezy conditions ahead of that front that's going to arrive Saturday afternoon. So winter alerts have been issued a winter storm watch for the mountains of Utah. Everything highlighted in blue Saturday 6 p.m. to Monday at 6 a.m. Mainly 6 to 12 inches of snow with some locally higher amounts possible. If you know somebody who's going to be hunting and camping this weekend in the mountains, you got to make sure they're going to be prepared, especially if somebody's already up there and they don't know what the forecast is. You got to check in on those people if you can. And then into tomorrow morning, 40s and 50s, just like this morning, we'll have a mild start Saturday morning and then things are going to get going. For St. George, you've got some widespread rain Saturday night and then into Sunday, some isolated storms still possible, but mainly drying out. For Ogden, a much better chance for the storms. We'll look at this Saturday, Saturday night, likely precipitation. Then middle of next week, we could see some more chances for a storm to slide in. For Utah County, Saturday, widespread precipitation, Saturday night, likely, Sunday, likely, and then we start to dry out. For St. George, you're near 80 tomorrow and Saturday, 20 degrees cooler on Sunday at 60 degrees for a high. For Salt Lake, same thing, Saturday afternoon and Saturday night into Sunday, best chance for precipitation. Could see some snow mixing in Sunday morning with those temps near freezing, 47 for a high on Sunday. Well, there was no tanking for the Utah Jazz last night. With everyone thinking this team would lose on purpose to get higher draft picks, the Jazz played great in their season opener. This team played together with seven players scoring in double figures as they beat the Denver Nuggets by 21 points. Jazz fans in the arena were great. The players fed off their energy while showing they're here to compete and win. Just having, I think, no expectation. Um... You know, they took us off national TV games. You know, we feel that. We feel some kind of 
type of slight, like, and they just kind of just throwing us away. We appreciate the energy. We love support. And we coming out here fighting for, you know, the Jazz, just like they fighting for us. So we love the energy, and it was loud. It definitely felt like another playoff game. It was just, it was, it was good to feel that again, though, because, you know, it's been missed. It a long summer. The Jazz play in Minnesota tonight against Rudy Gobert and the Timberwolves. He played well in his first game with the T-Wolves. 23 points, 16 points in that. Rebounds in that wild shot. He probably watched that like 50 times in the locker room. <laughs> I was surprised he didn't send me the clip yet. Uh, but nah, it's uh, going to be good to see him. You know, it's always love. Jazz, man, always, you dig? <laughs> It'll be fun. Um, miss Rudy, it'll be fun to see him again. It'll be fun to compete against him again. Our swag is just to have fun. You know, we're going to go out there and play as hard as we can, and nobody's going to take our joy away from the game. Going to do what we do and try to play as good as we can and hopefully get a win. So it'll be fun. First round of the high school football playoffs begin tomorrow. Lehigh has a bye after locking up the 5A number one seed with a perfect 10-0 record. The Pioneers have won 15 straight dating back to last season, and they're led by a defense that has recorded six shutouts this season. I think our defense has really been the catalyst for us winning it last year, and obviously setting the standard this year. I mean, it's like Corner Canyon, Tempview, Orm are the only teams to score on our defense all year. If our team plays, the way we can play, nobody should be able to beat us. We're in the NFL tonight, the Saints and Cardinals, former Weber State Wildcat Rashid Shaheed, 40-yard rushing touchdown in his first NFL game last week, and he had this 53-yard touchdown reception tonight. Then in the second quarter, it's former BYU Cougar Taysom Hill into the end zone for a touchdown, but the Cardinals had two pick sixes and won it. 42-34. More on Shahid. He's the third player in the Super Bowl era to have a rushing touchdown and reception touchdown of more than 40 yards in his first two games. Wow. That's a pretty good start. By the <laughs> That's really yeah. nice. Yeah. And you said the Jazz take on the Timberwolves tomorrow night, right? Tomorrow night in, in Minnesota. Minnesota. Uh -huh. All right. Hello, Rudy. Rudy Should be a good reunion with Rudy and, you know, some former teammates. Sure. Seem like they have Good relationship. They're going to want to beat each other on the court, but of course, you know, after the game, outside of game yeah. time. Thanks, Jeff. Yeah. We'll be right back. Guess Just what's, want yeah. to remind everyone <laughs> that this coming Saturday morning is the Making Strides Against Breast Cancer Walk taking place at Liberty Park. Registrations at 7:30, completely free. And we to march come up and enjoy. nine. Yep. Yes, come support everyone. Quick cast up next.